In this video, we're going to walk through a problem on variance analysis and standard costs. At the outset, it's helpful to understand what a standard cost is, and it's kind of what it sounds like. Companies uh, look at their product manufacturing and they decide, okay, what's the normal course of business, what's a normal amount of direct materials that we use in our product, the normal amount of labor, the normal amount of overhead, and then when they actually produce the product, they say, okay, how far did we deviate from the norms? And that's what a variance analysis is. Now, we can get into a lot more depth into what I've just said, but maybe that's more for your textbook or your notes. What I'm here to do today is just to work through a problem on variance analysis. The first part of our video, we're going to look at materials uh, variances, the second part, labor variances, and in the final part, variable overhead variances. So let's get started by reading through the question. Uh, the question says, I'm just going to get my pen tool ready. The question says, uh, Newport Company manufactures rubber sheets, hereafter called sheets, for use in trampolines. Uh, the company has developed the following standard cost for one sheet. So to make one trampoline sheet, it takes five kilograms of materials. Materials are supposed to cost us two bucks a kilogram. Therefore, our standard cost for trampolines is $10 of material goes into a sheet. Labor, it's supposed to take half an hour of labor, 12 bucks an hour. Uh, so $6 worth of labor goes into a sheet and variable overhead you can see there is $1.50. Our total here is $17.50. Um, not 1770s I have here and I will uh, change that in the copy that I upload. Uh, during March the following activity was recorded by the company rel uh, relative to the production of sheets and there's a whole list of activities and the first thing we've got to do is prepare our direct materials variances. So what I like to do whenever I prepare variances I'm just going to get a blank sheet for this is I like to set them up in a certain way. And, and the way I set up my variances is very consistent. Uh, and I think it'll make your life a heck of a lot easier. I set up this little table, and the table looks like this. A, Q, A, P. A, Q, S, P. And then I set up another table, A, Q, S, P and SQSP. And what the AQ stands for is actual quantity, the AP is actual price, SQ is standard quantity, and SP is standard price. And this is the way I'm going to compute all of my variances. Now for materials I make sort of two separate calculations and the reason is, and I'll explain as we go, but the direct material purchased may be different from the amount of direct material that I actually used. When I do labor and overhead, you'll see that the charts look a little bit different because the amount of labor I pay for it, I have to use it. I can't sort of put labor in storage. Materials you can put in storage and so we have to have two separate charts. One for the amount we purchased and another for the amount that we used. So anyway, let's start to fill this in and follow through the question. Um, so let's see, during March the following activity was recorded, materials were purchased 12,000 kilograms at a cost of $28,000. Okay, so my actual quantity, I'm going to measure my quantity of materials in kilograms and it was 12,000 kilograms. I know what I paid in total, I don't know my price per unit, but I know I paid $28,000 in total. So I can figure out my AP, my actual price, by working backwards. And I'll have to pull out the old calculator tool here. And my, let's see, 28,000 divided by 12,000, it's 2.333. So I actually paid 2.3333333 uh, per kilogram per, for materials. Now again, uh, AQ is 12,000. My standard price, scrolling up here, my standard rate per kilogram, my standard price per kilogram is $2. So 12,000 times two is 24,000. All right, uh, let's move, actually let's, let's go from here. So let's think about this thing logically. 
I bought 12,000 kilograms of materials. It cost me 28 grand, which was $2.33 a kilogram. Kil uh, the material is supposed to cost me, according to my standards, and again, I established the standards by looking at what might have happened in previous years or uh, looking at what the market's doing, and my standard rate, you can see there, is $2. So I paid $2.33. My standard says I should pay $2. I overpaid here. This means that I've got a variance. Uh, I paid $4,000 more than what I would expect to pay for 12,000 kilograms. I paid $4,000 more than I would expect to pay. This variance is unfavorable, and we note unfavorable as just a U. So this is a $4,000 unfavorable variance. Now I've got to say, what type of variance is this? Well, it's certainly not a quantity variance because the quantity was the same, 12,000, 12,000. What was different between the two? It was my price. So this is a $4,000 unfavorable direct materials price variance. All right, so we've computed our price variance. Let's move over and compute our quantity variance. Our actual quantity, I might say, oh, AQ is 12,000, 12,000. Well, no, wait a minute now. This is for direct materials used. So how much direct material did I use? Well, let's see. Materials purchased 12,000 kilograms at a cost of $28,000. There was no beginning inventory of materials on hand to start the month. At the end of the month, 2,000 uh, kilograms of materials remained in the warehouse unused. So I started the month with 12,000. I, I purchased, I started the month with zero. I purchased 12,000. I end the month with 2,000 kilograms. How many kilograms did I use? Well, if I bought 12,000, I got 2,000 left over, I must have used 10,000 kilograms. So my actual quantity used is going to be 10,000 kilograms. My standard price, well, it's $2 per kilogram. So AQSP here is 20,000. Uh, in terms of SQSP, let's uh, deal with that. Uh, well, SP comes over at $2. Standard quantity is also called standard quantity allowed. And I always answer it by filling in the blanks in this sentence. I fill in the blanks in this sentence. Here's the sentence I write every time. Given the, oh my gosh, my writing is so bad. Given the actual level of output, and what I mean by level of output is number of units produced. So given the actual number of units produced, how much material or labor or overhead driver should have been used. That's the question you got to ask yourself anytime you're calculating standard quantity. Given the actual number of units I made, how much in this case, how much material should have been used? So, what was my actual output? I haven't actually read the whole question. So it talks about materials here in A and B. C talks about labor, D overhead, and then E. During December, 21,000, uh, 2100, not 1,000, good sheets were produced. So we made 2,100 units. So given that I made 2,100 units, how much material should that have taken? Well, 2,100 units is how many uh, units I made. It's supposed to take five kilograms, that's the standard quantity. So 2100 times five is 10,500. That's my standard quantity. My standard quantity here is 10,500. 10,500 times two is 21,000. And you can see here, I've got a variance of $1,000. These are measured in dollars, by the way. That's a dollar sign. And there's a dollar sign there. So I've got a thousand dollar variance. Now I've got to say, well, this is my quantity variance. This is my direct materials quantity variance. I've got to say, is it a good variance or a bad variance? Well, again, the way I like to do it is I like to compare the numbers. So I go, okay, the prices are the same, two and two. So there's no variance there. Quantities are different. I actually use 10,000 kilograms of materials. Based on my output, I should have used 10,500 kilograms of materials, but I only use 10,000. 
So this is good, right? I only used 10,000. I should have used 10,500. It means I use my materials more efficiently than expected. This is a favorable variance, so we mark it with an F. This is my direct materials quantity variance. Now, a lot of textbooks, they don't like you to combine these two separate variances. I don't mind. Our overall materials variance here then is 3,000 unfavorable, right? 4,000 unfavorable, 1,000 favorable, 4 to the bad, 1 to the good leaves us $3,000 to the good. All right, we've completed our quantity variance and our price variance. Compute the price and quantity variances. Part B of the question says, the materials were purchased from a new supplier who is anxious to enter into a long-term purchase contract. Would you recommend that the company sign the contract? Okay, well, the new supplier appears to have given us better quality materials. And why would I say better quality materials? Well, we use the materials more efficiently than we are used to, right? We uh, use the materials, we use less materials than what we expected. So it's better quality material, but even though they're better quality material, he charged us more, he or she, this supplier, charged us more per kilogram. So I would say, unless we can get them to match the old price of $2, I don't know that I would enter into the contract because the fact that they're more expensive than our other supplier, 4,000 unfavorable, more than outweighs any efficiency that we might get. So I would say I would not recommend that the company sign the contract. Now that said, maybe our price is uh, off or this variance was uh, 4,000 unfavorable and it would have been no matter which supplier we went with. In other words, maybe the price of rubber went up. If that's the case, we've got an out of date standard and we should change our standard from two to 233 and that should become our new standard. So something that you always need to consider with these variances is maybe they're caused by an old out of date standard, which is always a possibility. All right, I hope this first part of the video has been uh, useful to you. We've computed our direct materials price and quantity variance. In the next part of the video, we're going to go through labor and overhead variances.